Individual player awards have been around since the start of football, whether that's to recognise brilliant player seasons or just simply to tickle Cristiano Ronaldo's ego, they're always going to be there and they're here to stay. But in this video, let's talk about maybe the most cursed individual player award there is, and that's the Golden Boy. The Golden Boy was an award made by Italian sports newspaper Tutto Sport in 2003. It's to recognise the best talent under the age of 21 in the European top leagues. Growing up, it always felt like a bit of an afterthought. However, especially in the 2010s, when they predicted some world-class players, it seems like it's become more of a rite of passage for the best young player in the world to win it. As we saw with last year, Jude Bellingham had a fantastic season and therefore won the award. But who would have thought it giving a 18-year-old, 19-year-old lad an award saying you are the best player under the age of 21 in the entire world, or at least in Europe, was a bad thing. But it seems like it has been over recent years. Let's fly through all the winners of the Golden Boy since 2003 and then we can kind of evaluate see where it's gone wrong for these players. 2003, Van der Vaart. 04, Wayne Rooney. 05, Lionel Messi. 06, Fabregas. 07, Aguero. 08, Anderson. 09, Pato. And then 2010, Mario Balotelli. 2011, Mario Goethe. 2012, Isco. 2013, Pogba. 14, Raheem Sterling. 15, Martial. 16, Renato Sanchez. 17, Kylian Mbappe. 2018, Matthias De Ligt. 2019, Jao Felix. 2020, Erling Haaland. 2021, Pedri. 2022, Gavi. And then 2020, Jude Bellingham. It's funny to look back with hindsight because you can either say, especially that late 2000s, 2010 period, were either the voters just completely watching a different game or was the level of football, especially of the younger players, just a lot lower because going from Wayne Rooney, Lionel Messi, Cesc Fabregas and Sergio Aguero to then Anderson, Alexandra Pato, Mario Balotelli, Mario Goethe, the difference of quality between those crop of players it's just completely, it's two worlds apart. So let's take a look at that period. Let's have a look at Anderson. Anderson got awarded it whilst he was at FC Porto. He had a great under-17 World Cup for the Brazilian national team. And he was playing for Porto and then Manchester United, bought him for about £30 million, which in 2007 was just a ridiculous sum of money. Then obviously, Alexandre Pato, you could argue injuries, hindered him quite a lot throughout his career. He was very promising, starting from AC Milan with Ibrahimovic at the time. Very exciting team. However, he just didn't really amount to anything. And it's come out recent times that it seemed like he lost love with football. It seemed like his injuries really weighed on his mental health. And that's similar to the 2011 winner, Mario Gertz who we all remember his iconic goal against Argentina in the World Cup final. And under Jurgen Klopp at Brussy Dortmund, he was a very, very good young player. And I think, unfortunately, his injuries just crept up more and more and more. And I know he's had issues that have been out of his control in terms of his weight, in terms of his fitness, that he just couldn't be able to manage. So that has put him on, you could argue, the down spiral of his career. And then, obviously, Mario Balotelli, riddled with off-the-field problems. No one can ever argue his individual brilliance, but... He could never really find a home. Even at AC Milan, when he left Manchester City, he had his probably best season, especially in the Serie A. But other than that, he's been a journeyman for the rest of his career. And I really do think the main reason why it seems like some of these players just can't handle the pressure is because they haven't really achieved anything yet. Ballon d'Or obviously awards the quote-unquote best player in the world. You could argue it from years and years and years. Is it a popularity contest? Whatever it is. However, the person who wins it is obviously at least in the top five players in the world at the time. So there's essentially no pressure on them because it's awarded the season after they've played and therefore they don't have to achieve anything after that. Once you've won the Ballon d'Or, realistically, I mean, look at Karim Benzema. He won the Ballon d'Or and he went to Saudi Arabia after that. No one's really questioned that. Yeah, they went, that's a bit of a weird move. He's still somewhat in his prime. But everyone went, he's won the Ballon d'Or, he's hit the pinnacle of football. So there's nowhere to go than that. Whereas obviously with the Golden Boy, it's a prediction. It's a prediction from essentially journalists going, I think you are going to be this good. I think you're going to be this good. And obviously with some players like a, a Kylian Mbappe, an Erling Haaland, it didn't take a genius to give those players the Golden Boy because they came out the womb scoring 20 goals a season. Did they still have to exceed, at least reach expectations? Of course they did, but once we all saw Mbappe in that Monaco team, once we saw him play Manchester City, once we saw him play Juventus, we all knew he at least was going to be a top quality player. We might not have expected how good he's become, but we knew he was going to be there. Likewise with Erling Haaland, we all knew he was going to be just an absolute goal machine. And I think an unfortunate thing is, is when in a year where there aren't the best young players under the age of 21, then some players, 
you could argue win it by default. I'm gonna look at Raheem Sterling. I did a video on Sterling a couple of weeks back. I think he's a great player and I'm happy he's gone to Arsenal now. If we're being honest, he was never the... He should never have won a golden boy if you're comparing it to the other players on the list. He was starting in a Liverpool team where he was playing well. I mean, let's face it, he's playing in a team just past Suarez. He had Sturridge in the team. He had good players around him and he was one of the better players in the team. Fantastic, great wonder kid. But what is the criteria? Because obviously... When Mbappe is starting for Monaco and is one of the best strikers in the world. When Haaland is one of the best strikers in the world. When Jude Bellingham is one of the best players at Real Madrid and the Champions League winning team. Then you have to compare it to these other players. And I think it's the crop of players within that. The other nominees for the Golden Boy that year. Callum Chambers, Kurt Zuma, John Stones, Lazar Markovic, Adnan Yanazai, Luke Shaw, Sandro from Barcelona if anyone remembers him. And realistically, Callum Chambers, I'm not in, I think he's in the championship now. Kurt Zuma is just a pretty decent Premier League centre-back. Luke Shaw, I mean, he could have been one of the best left-backs in the world if he didn't get injured. But because of this, Raheem Sterling, he, he deserved to win in the year because obviously the players, but he didn't deserve to have the crown of the best young player in the world that year, did he? And unfortunately, I think that lumps unnecessary pressure on him. Sterling, I think he... He didn't live up to the expectation, but he still had a fantastic career with all the pressure on him at young age. But like I say, if I'm comparing it to the Ballon d'Or, if I'm comparing it to the Premier League player of the season, you don't win it by default. You have to either be the best player on the best team, or you're just the best player in the world. Luka Modric had a brilliant season with Croatia and Real Madrid, and therefore he won the Ballon d'Or. He didn't get given that title because they couldn't find anyone else to give the award to. He just got given that because he was, for argument's sake, the best player in the world that year. And to follow up on the unnecessary pressure, the golden boy, because everyone loves titles and everything like that, it's always going to be attached to you for the rest of your career. Mario Balotelli, Mario Goethe, Isco, all these players, you'll see it in the articles when they've had a bad season or they're on the down spiral of the career, it will say X Golden Boy Award winner. And that is a huge cross to carry. You're having a bad season. Mario Goethe had his health problems off the field. Isco really struggled at Real Madrid when Zidane came in and he had some issues there. All these issues that sometimes are within your control, sometimes they're not. You also have that added pressure of you're essentially letting the worldwide football fan base down because you haven't achieved that potential. And like I say, when you do see the other players achieving the potential, then people just ask the question, why hasn't he? And therefore it comes up, he's a massive flop. And nowadays, flops are just Everyone likes to talk about flops, transfer flops, golden boy flops, and there's no getting away from it because it's not like you won Man United Academy Player of the Year in 2015 and now you're playing for Rochdale. You've literally been given a golden award to show how good you are under the age of 21. If you want to say a positive for the award, I think it gives players who have won it a third, a fourth, a fifth chance for clubs to re-sign them because there's always going to be that potential there. Look at Renato Sanchez, look at João Felix. These two players have been bouncing around clubs and clubs and clubs. They've had good spells, they've had bad spells. There's always a club that seems like they'll be interested in them because they had that potential once in their career. Obviously an Anthony Martial who's just been injured, who seems frankly disinterested. I think people are just washing their hands with him now. But someone like a Renato Sanchez, where he has shown promise and he has shown ability post his Golden Boy Award season, teams are always going to take a punt on them prior to the age of probably 28, 29. Because if you can get, like say, Renato Sanchez for 15 million and then you get him up to his potential, or 70% of that potential, then you've got one of the best midfielders in the world for such a small price, and there's no risk to it whatsoever, because at the end of the day, Chelsea bought Jao Felix, they've spent a fraction of what Atletico Madrid paid for him from Benfica, if he doesn't work out, they could probably sell him for near enough the same price due to his name, due to his pedigree, and if he does work out, they've got an absolute bargain, and they might have one of the best strikers in the world. Saying all of this, I think the people who have picked the award over the last seven years have got most of it right. Let's take a look. Mbappe, De Ligt, João Felix, Haaland, Pedri, Gavi, Jude Bellingham. I mean, other than João Felix, Gavi is the jury still out. He's still so, so young. And Mateus De Ligt just moved to Man United. Other than that, I think all those players, you could argue, are world class and are near enough hitting their potential. And as much as I think it's great people respecting young talent in the game and the potential and the future of football, it's just tough, isn't it? Because all these players, they have just that weight on them for the rest of their career. And sometimes it seems a bit unfair and cruel. Sometimes players are always going to hit their potential, no matter what people do. They just have that mentality, or it's just fate, and Mbappe was always going to be Thierry Henry's remake. It just seems like 99% of them are just set up to fail. But we'll see. 
I imagine Yamal is probably going to win this year's Golden Boy after the Euros and just his season at Barcelona. And again, he looks fantastic, but he's 17. In three years' time, he might be the exact same player, and people are going, where's the time gone? But let me know what you think of the award. Let me know what you think, if it does put unnecessary pressure, or if the players just aren't up to it, and it's their fault their careers haven't turned out the way everyone expected. If you leave a like on the video, that'd be great. If you could subscribe, fantastic. And like I say, leave a comment. But thanks for watching.